All right, we'll call this meeting to order for February the 4th, 2020. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the February 4th, 2020 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councilor, Delo uh, Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Quintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the January 21st, 2020 Municipal Developers and Regular Council meetings as well as the January 28, 2020 Committee of the Whole Budget Meeting be received and approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, number four. We are supposed to be having a delegation the delegation were notified and uh, confirmed that they were attending. Okay. Well, we'll just move on, and if they come, then we'll just slide them into wherever we where we are. So, <clears throat> six point one. Resolved that the AMM meeting request be confirmed and approved for March nineteenth at three thirty p.m. in the council chambers. Moved by Councilor White. Seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Is there anything on that then? Uh, not really. It's just that the AMM would like to have a have a meeting with the uh, with the council. Okay. Wh whoever can uh, attend. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Result that council received the 2020 Municipal Officials Seminar invitation as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor White. This is on just the decision to who may be attending this thing. When will we have that uh, handed in? By early March? Yeah, it's, uh, it's for April. Uh, so I'm just really putting it in front of you tonight so that uh, Council can decide if someone wants to go. Yeah. Or some people Usually you and I have to go to that, right? Yeah. And then it's not an absolute that everybody has to attend, but some do. Because I think last year I think we had about three. So we can think about that maybe for our next meeting then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And they haven't announced or the agenda of the presentations yet either. They just okay. got slots. So. All right. All right. All in favor? Let's carry. <clears throat> 6.3, result of the January 20th, 2020 letter from the Health Minister Friesen be received as information. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, I was disappointed by the letter by the uh, Health Minister. Uh, it, it certainly, in my mind, wasn't optimistic. We're still doing study, we're doing research, and I think they've had a year of uh, communication with our council and other members of our valley community. And I think we should follow up with a letter saying, hey, we're not uh, excited about this letter. We'd like to meet with you in person to explain what we think about it all. He may not be getting the message that we think he should be getting, maybe somewhere in between with one of his subordinates. Um, yeah, and we can still lobby for that. Um, we will have a chance to meet with uh, uh, Minister Peterson on the 14th so this is something that we can bring up with him but in the letter it also uh, mentions to contact uh, Lynette to come remember what her last name is I can't uh, so. yeah so I'll be contacting her in the next couple days I tried to phone her yesterday and I wasn't successful but I'll definitely try to touch base with her to see what uh, what information that she can give us as far as where this is going and if we're even close to anything so but again, uh, on Friday the 14th, we need to lobby hard to the Minister uh, Peterson. Okay, all in favor? Let's carry. <clears throat> 6.4, resolved that the building permits 9719 through 420 with a total estimated value of 246,500 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor, it's carried. 7.1, resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, any questions, comments? Councilor Morio. 
Um, in the engineering section, uh, Mr. Poole, uh, where it says working on with MPI and Environment Office regarding a petroleum contaminated spill in town. Any details on what that is? Uh, actually, I don't know. Was it a fire? No. No. It was our RCMP reported some vandalism of a residence truck and dumped about 100 liters of fuel on private property. So it's just a, a private property's parking lot, and the environment officer was contacted, and <clears throat> MPI is getting, uh, they're asking us to do the work and build them. Okay. Now I understand the connection between environment and MPI. Yeah. Uh, on that, um, do we have to clean that, that up for them? Yeah. That, Unless that it's, uh, it, it's a, it was an asphalt parking lot, so it, yes, if it was gravel, they would have to do a stage two process, which would happen in the spring. Wow. Councilor White. Uh, regarding the uh, sewer main flushing, begun in 2018, we'll complete 25% of town sewers. Does that mean since 2018 to 2020, we've done 25% of them, or you did 25% in this year? No, we shoot for 20 to 25% when on the years that we do the program. Yeah. In 2018, we did 25%. We flushed 25% of them. We didn't do any in 2019. We're going to do 25% in 2020. So there's 50% left to go? Is that an issue? Not flushing them? Flushing no, them? no, it's just routine maintenance. Okay. You don't flush them. And we're saying we're going to do it every four years, okay. four to five years. Right. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? <clears throat> Carried. 7.2 town survey, uh, the $50 chamber bucks draw. So we had the uh, survey that we put out there about, I don't know, close to a month ago. And uh, we had how many uh, respondents, Mr. Crow? Uh, <clears throat> we had uh, 217, I believe, for the town. Okay. And then uh, 50 some for Swan Valley West and uh, a few less for for Minnetonas, uh, and so the names that have participated have been put in the box and uh, have been shaken up, and you just pick one of them out, and okay. that will be the winner. So that, that survey was very valuable to us yes. as far as um, uh, the information that, we, um, that we've received uh, moving forward, so very valuable information. So I guess I'll do this. Just give me the box. We removed your name. Yeah. <laughs> no town employees. <clears throat> Let me fill it up. The winner of the fifty dollars is Angela Pierpont. So congratulations to Angela Pierpont. Okay, moving on. Seven point three. Council and town managers report. I'll start with <coughs> Councillor Morial. Um. Not too a whole lot this uh, last two weeks. Uh, on the 27th of January, we had a joint council meeting with our neighboring municipalities to talk about uh, the future of RISE and what it should entail. Um, there were some positive results from that. And I guess there's some resolutions that need to go back or to each municipality to confirm the decision that was made there. And last night was the G5 meeting uh, again with the same municipal partners um, where we had a, some fruitful discussions on a number of topics um, where we're looking and there was a consensus to move forward and investigate uh, shared opportunities uh, with animal control, handy van, um, great support uh, with them uh, willing to write letters and even meet with people on the crime issue in the valley and whatnot. So. Um, I think it's burned on a lot of thought process and discussions there, so it was a good meeting. And we had our budget meeting, uh, continue on with our deliberations um, with that, uh, which is encouraging. Um, but uh, according to the survey, I guess crime is our number one issue, so that's something that we're going to have to tackle um, with more aggressively, either by looking at bringing in um, other options for policing. Uh, to supplement the RCMP or whatnot, there's going to be some hard uh, decisions to be made, which uh, um, council and administrations actively pursuing um, what the pricings are and options for that uh, um, to mitigate this uh, crime issue, which is at a crisis level. So, um, but if anybody has any opportunities, uh, feel free to 
give myself or administration to pass the message on um, to deal with this issue. So. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wendoni. <clears throat> I attended the same meetings as Councillor Morio. <clears throat> He couldn't have said it better if I couldn't have said it better myself, so I, that's all I have to report today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor White. Holy smokes, an all time short. Sure. Uh, I missed that last meeting, but I, I really wanted to thank uh, Councilor Morio for coordinating the Citizens on Patrol <coughs> concept. I think it's going to bear fruit for our community, and I thank you for doing that publicly. And the crime seminars we attended also, where the uh, town was, and, and Valley were exposed to possibility of things you can do. Also, had the opportunity to be, I was invited to the uh, Snowmobile Association meeting and uh, just reminded myself what a wonderful thing Snowman, Snowman and the snow, two snowmobile entities we have in our community do for us. Uh, we went by the Westwood today, there was sleds all over, and that brings a lot of money to our community. So, kudos to both snowmobile groups, and uh, hopefully, if they need some help, we would consider that, of course. And I uh, met with uh, Minister Fielding a while back, uh, Minister of Finance. And of course, Dr. Recruiting and the CT scan were up front, and again, uh, Councilor Morio and I both presented there. Uh, medical service meeting just very recently, uh, we discussed the feasibility study of the uh, local medical people, uh, looking at where and how they are hoping to expand. So that's a work in process. And with the Prairie Mountain Health Board meeting recently in Brandon also, and uh, one of the priorities is communication strategies. How are we communicating with the public, with our ratepayers, remember what's happening in healthcare? Because I think, like all entities, communication is something we can always do better. And the RISE meeting, which has been alluded to already in Minnetonas. I also, um, so a bunch of us had the opportunity, I think, Councilor Mora, you were there. Who else was there with those people from 4-H? Myself and Councilor Delore. And yourself and yeah. Councilor Delore, thank you. So. Uh, the local, one of the local 4-H groups have offered to donate a beef. The uh, Anderson family donate the beef free. They'll coordinate the getting their 4-H people, selling tickets, doing the pro promo, getting all the prizes. And in the past, this particular activity has raised $15,000 for whatever it was about. And they hope to do that. So I would encourage the public to uh, consider some ideas how to raise money for health care also. And I want to compliment publicly uh, Mayor uh, Jacobson and uh, Councillor Delore, they have volunteered to co-chair as the fundraising chairs, and uh, that's fantastic. And of course, I'm sure Council will help as we can, as you ask us to. And a concept that came up last night at, uh, at the uh, G5 meeting was the possibility of a large group, all of us, as long as we had quorum, rep representing the Valley as a whole, we could make decisions and it would be legal rather than going back to our respective councils to hash it around again, and sometimes it gets lost in translation. So I really want to compliment uh, CEO uh, Kroll for that concept. And again, 100% charge are in favor of RISE, uh, looking at crime solutions, which we talked about, and CT funding, which I'm not happy with the uh, Minister of Health in his response. Personally, I think uh, they should be moving faster on that. It could cost me my membership. <laughs> That's it, thank you. All right, thank you. So just uh, uh, from me, uh, a little expanding on the 4-H uh, presentation, um, as chair of the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, um, we had met with them, uh, with Councilor Morio and Councilor White and, and Delorier, and, um, and obviously <coughs> Councilor White said that they want to help in, in, a, in the process of fundraising for the CT scanner and, and we thought this was a great opportunity uh, for like a bigger picture as far as fundraising and getting the community involved with a fundraising effort and, and to kick start it all, or kick it off with uh, a fundraising effort from the 4-H club which it's their 65th anniversary this year. So uh, I look forward to working with them and, uh, and moving forward with uh, fundraising efforts for the CT scanner and, and also having people from the community who are interested in being part of that group to, uh, to give us a call and, and jump on board because it's not just elected people that are working on this, it's everybody of the whole valley working on this very important uh, initiative uh, for our valley. Um, I also attended uh, our vet board meeting last week uh, it was basically just to accept tenders on 
who would be our secretary treasurer and uh, the Swan River. Uh, town of Swan River was the only acceptable bid uh, to, uh, to that, so Town of Swan River will now be uh, appointing a secretary treasurer to the vet board and we'll be moving forward with that. So if anybody has any questions about that, I'm open to that. Um, over the weekend, I was away, uh, but I received several calls that were very concerning about crime, and, uh, and it's any time that I think that any of us here, if somebody's been impacted by crime in every, any capacity, it's very concerning, and, 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 I, and I don't like hearing it, and I get very upset about it. Um, I did have uh, a lengthy discussion with MLA Wojcik about this on Sunday, and uh, we talked about crime and you know big and small, and how we have to lobby Minister Cullen on on this um, uh, this new project that the province is coming out with with this crime reductions uh, teams, and they specifically had said that they were going to have one that was going to be dedicated for Western Manitoba. And so we need to lobby. So another thing that we'll be talking to uh, uh, Minister Peterson about is this as well. But further to that, um, we will also be lobbying still to have a meeting with Minister Cullen, hopefully here or in Winnipeg, or if it's teleconference, it doesn't matter. But we have to get our message across because something is, uh, I think we're getting lost in, in, in some discussion here and, and we can't, each of us have, you know, every right to, you know, form a minister or go and talk to the MLA and, and make sure our voices are heard. Um, I also spoke with uh, Minister or MLA Wojcik about uh, the health minister's letter, uh, as you uh, had mentioned, Councillor White, and uh, about the CT scanner and how um, we're we're not going to let this go and we're going to keep putting the pressure on the province on this, and hopefully uh, Minister Friesen will listen to us, otherwise maybe we'll have to just have to drive down to the ledge and, and walk in and, and maybe announce our own meeting or something, but I don't want to be too drastic, but I think that this is just going on way too long. Um, yesterday, I also spent a great deal of time with uh, the special assistant to the Minister Cullen, Ju of Just Justice Minister, uh, Duncan Hamilton, and we spoke in length about crime and the crime in our community and, and, and all over the province. And, and yeah, we're not the only people that are suffering from crime and in whatever capacity, but I told him, I said, you know what, we, we, we have to do something about this because people are at the end of their wits. This is not good. And some people have been targeted more than others, and this is really concerning. And, uh, and I mentioned that we really need to get one of these crime reduction teams in the Swan River or in the Valley. I don't think they have actually have them established yet. They're working on all that, but uh, he told me that to keep you know lobbying and, and and not only us as the town of Swan River, but the RCMP as well. So I did have a after that discussion, I had a long discussion with the staff sergeant about this as well, and uh, and, and told him that we need to work all together. And and you know and, and on that. When it comes to crime, especially what we're dealing with right now, everybody has to work together on that. It's not only just council and RCMP; it's citizens and everybody. And you know, if you if you look how how I think it's it, it's starting to get get that way. And what I mean by that, if you look at social media, when something happens, somebody sees something that's not normal, right away they're taking a picture and they're sharing it. And and one was shared, I think, on Monday that I seen, and this thing was shared like almost a hundred shares in, in less than five minutes. So this is just one uh, piece that we can keep on using, but we, we have to work together on this. And eventually, you know, um, I think we can snuff, I'm hoping that we can uh, to do something about it. Um, the uh, special assistant mentioned to me also that they had just had a summit or a meeting with the federal uh, minister as well. And uh, it's it's not only in the province of Manitoba. This is like everywhere, and obviously they talked about laws that have to be changed, and some laws will have to be changed. That does take time for laws to be changed at federal and provincial level, but they are work. They're beginning to start, you know, working on that, or maybe they're in the stages of some of that already. And um, uh, the, go the, the federal government has come out with uh, a new guns and gangs uh, program. 
and will be assisting the provinces with this type of thing. It's not only gangs and guns, but also with the crime and, and the theft that we're dealing with as well. So it's, it's you know, the people that are being, you know, targeted and, and hit constantly, they don't feel good about this. And, and, we, and as, as citizens in our town, we don't feel good about what we see, but there are people working on this. And I think Councilor White had mentioned that maybe a couple weeks ago. And, and people don't understand, they're going to be frustrated, and I don't, I, don't, I don't blame them in any way. And I feel frustrated, and that's why I spent so much time on this yesterday, because we've got to, got to keep nudging the, the governments and, and to give us support. So um, that was basically uh, it from me as far as what my day was like yesterday. Councillor White. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for everything you comment. And I, I, I heard it through there, but I think it's so important for the community as a whole to realize, I don't expect they expect us to do this. Of course, we're part of the team, but you, the community as a whole, can report things to the RCMP. You can call the Minister of uh, Justice, Minister Cullen. You can call your MLA. And if we have the whole community involved doing the phoning, writing letters, even more important, if you want the letters, the addresses, we could get those for you quickly. But if the whole community responds, saying, hey, how do we solve this together collaboratively, it, it will it will go away somewhat quicker, I would hope, but you can't expect any one entity to do that. Right, and and you know, and on the crime, you know, we'll be working with the province and and and, and how that means maybe with this you know crime reduction team. But then at the same time, I think that there has been a little bit of discussion within this team as far as what we need to do in our community, and and I think that we'll have more discussion about that in the next week as far as in a, in a call meeting. As, as far as how we can deal things, maybe in a, in a way in, in the short term anyways. So there's more to that as we move along, so. All right, anything from you, Mr. Kroll? Uh, I've got a couple things. Uh, I took some training in Winnipeg with AMM, uh, leading practices in municipal governance. Uh, funny thing, when when all of the CAOs and different representatives <clears throat> were at the meeting, <clears throat> the host asked each each person to stand up and give a short introduction and, and say what the biggest issue in your town was. And uh, again and again, crime was the biggest issue. Uh, again, for us, it was crime as well. But uh, but you know it it is telling that so many towns did stand up and say you know they. They have to fix infrastructure, but you know what? Crime is just uh, running, you know, criminals are running rampant right now. And uh, so I, I think it is a very widespread problem, but that doesn't make the effect any less on the people who live here in town as right. well. Um, we have a contractor coming uh, on the 25th to look at the Whirlpool to uh, video camera some of the pipes of the Whirlpool, so hopefully we may be one on our first step toward uh, getting the Whirlpool back up and running. So uh, that's that's good news. Uh, I, I attended G5, I attended RISE, I attended to basically uh, most of the meetings that everybody listed there, except for the 4-H, which, uh, which I didn't, uh, but, but the other ones I did. Uh, and we've been working uh, in the administration and uh, all the directors have been working on budget and strategic planning. Those are things that we're working on right now. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. And, and going back to crime, what you just mentioned, and, and, I, and I, I spoke to several of the councillors in the last few days, and I, and I relayed to them that right now crime is our number one concern and our priority because we heard that through the people that we have uh, through the, the, the survey as well as just people we talk to on a daily basis and uh, right now this is going to be our number one uh, priority to, to do something about this. Okay, well thank you. Uh, moving on, 8.1. Uh, I guess this is for information, Mr. Crow. Uh, street naming? Hi. Uh, yes, actually, it was uh, Director Poole. Yeah. Uh, I guess just to summarize, Council had uh, inquired about. Uh, I guess there was two inquiries from Council that we got was to recommend a street be named in, in Dick Walker's honor, and uh, could we make it uh, a legal 
a legal street name. So I just gave some information to council, uh, basically just showing the streets that we've uh, that we give secondary name additions to. So they're, they're not legal names, but uh, Veterans Way, Cooperative Way, Co-op Drive, and most recent Elbert Chartrand Way are not the legal names of the streets. We just have given them secondary names and they get the decorative street blade on top of the legal street blade. So I guess the, the street proposed uh, to, be, to be named in, in Dick Walker's honor is uh, First Street North from 4th Avenue to PTH 10. Uh, everyone knows where that is. That's where he used to live. And, I believe in my recommendation, I, I do have that. I think it's appropriate. Alternatively, another uh, inquiry was for, I don't know if it was a, supposed to be a surprise, but for mayor, the previous mayor, Glenn McKenzie, uh, to have a street named after him. So uh, if we wanted to make this legal, we can register uh, Glenn McKenzie Avenue uh, where on the street that's currently known as Fifth Avenue West. So I, I just added a map in my report so everyone knows where that is. But uh, I have those in my recommendations, but it's ultimately up to council. And I state we don't, we don't currently have a street naming policy. Uh, we can have one uh, for council uh, later in the year, just so I don't give you a deadline and not make it. I uh, gave, some self, gave myself some time, but I, I added a link into uh, the city of Brandon's, which I think is a uh, is a really good policy. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think both gentlemen have contributed immensely to our community over a long period of time and in a positive, uh, responsible way. I don't know that we have to go through the, the total legalities. We can put the sign up and that's not against the law. We can put the sign up that, that on top of an existing sign. And in the order of priority, uh, Mr. Walker probably committed to our community, contributed to our community for 50, 60 years. And uh, it, I think a sign costs $100, and it's a small thank you. One of the comments that said it was nearly done posthumously, how do you say that word? I don't agree with that, because you know, if, if the person or persons that are nominated are of the, of the quality we think they are, it should not be a concern. And if, if somebody complains, I'm not worried about that personally. I would rather recognize somebody while they're alive and well and their family could see it than the recipient could receive it. So I, I like the idea. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I, I like the idea too. I would like to see, uh, as far as Mr. Walker goes and, and that street, I think that it can be jointly named rather quickly actually. Um, but as far as the the other, I, I would rather, I would like to see a, the policy of, you know, for councils moving forward. Go ahead. Would you like a resolution brought back for next meeting? What's, uh, yeah, I, I would be fine with councillors are fine with that. I did, could you repeat, please? Would you like a resolution brought back for the next meeting on please. the naming of yep, Walker thank you. Way? Okay. Or trail, sorry. Thank you. All right, moving on. Result of the 2020 B schedule be approved as per Schedule A. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion. I guess just for Council's information, uh, as opposed to last year where everyone was told to give basically a 5% a increase on everything, uh, all the managers basically looked at their fees and reported them to me, and and uh, this is where we believe our fees need to rise. I try. I added this uh, last week so everyone could get a good look at it. But if there's any questions, they're not shocking increases. It's basically cost of living type increase. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> 8.3. Resolved, resolved the withdrawal of the offer given to the Town of Swan River on Lots 429 and 431 Valley View Drive be accepted 
Furthermore, the offer to 423 11th Avenue South be accepted with the stated conditions as per Schedule A. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, Councilor Morio. Um, looking at the conditions that they're putting on there, um, they're asking for uh, one single lot now, but they're asking to have two tax incentives um, for two separate builds. And in reviewing the tax incentive policy, um, it only outlines um, as a residential, not a garage, um, eligible for it. And giving two separate tax incentives for one single lot, I, I think is not the intent of the tax incentive property. Um, so it's, I believe, believe that is what they're only asking for one new lot now as compared to the two that they were before. It is an amalgamated lot, but it, 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 didn't, it's, it's, it was a part of the same subdivision that, that was uh, trailer park. So it used to be two. These ones are amalgamated where, where the previous sale was two separate lots. These ones used to be two, but they've legally been changed into one. Um, but it, it doesn't change the fact that uh, a garage is not, according to the existing policy, is, is not eligible for um, an incentive, um, which says eligible developments is a new single family dwelling, including duplexes um, and multifamily, or new construction of commercial or residential structures, or the expansion of existing commercial or industrial, or development projects that have not received other infrastructure financial incentives. Uh, for the construction actively concerned. So. No, that, and that's correct. I was, that's just information for council that they used to be so. two separate lots. Okay, Council so. White. So if the garage was attached to the house when they built it, it would be eligible for the incentive because it would be part of the facility. But they wouldn't be able to get it. Well, I understand this is slightly different, but my thinking is if you're going to build a garage and then build a house, Somebody who builds a house with a garage attached to it is eligible. So if your garage isn't attached to it, you're not eligible. That's not making sense to me. I think it should be the same as if you have a built-in garage or your garage is separate, you're eligible or you're not eligible. Oh, but I think that they're, they're asking to have two bites at the apple here. They want an incentive package for the garage. And then in a couple years when they want to build a house, they want to go after the tax incentive again for the house. That would still amount to the same amount of money, though? No, they want double as to what if you built it all at once, is the way I'm understanding their conditions. Which could be, yeah, someone could easily go, well, I'll build a house this year on a lot, and then in two, five years, build a, a garage, and then say, I want a tax incentive for my garage. That's correct. They're asking for two incentive programs on the same property. But if they built it as a separate entity, for the whole building, would the numbers not come out to be the same? We wouldn't, we normally, typically, our incentive program doesn't allow two incentive processes on the same property, so we've never done this in the past. Oh, that's not making sense. So, so the, um, the properties are uh, amalgamated then? Yeah. It's one property? Go ahead, Tom. Wouldn't the incentive package allude to whatever is built on the one lot? So <clears throat> I'm not sure if, and I, maybe I'm reading it wrong as well. I, I would assume that it would just be one incentive package for the entire property, not necessarily two separate packages. I think that they're just delaying the building of, or by the sounds of it is, um, building a garage first and then the house the following year. So I guess my question is why couldn't the incentive package apply to the lot as a whole? I, I, that, that, that would mean that you're, you're not agreeing to their condition. <clears throat> right. Be because the incentive plan or the incentive comes in once the, the, the first construction or ever on that property is complete, right? So if they build a garage on the property in year one and it's complete, uh, then the following year they'll receive 
whatever the incentive is on that whatever that was built. Right, correct. So if they build a house one year or four years later, that's what their condition is. They want to go through that that tax savings again, but we, we can't. It's already happened for the for the development that's already right there. Can we just delay the incentive until the entire development is built? Exactly. That's totally acceptable within that. And, and, and that's what I was going to just say, like, yeah. you can just defer it until they actually have the building completed. And we, but they would, that means no incentive for the garage. Right. Okay. Short then that's, we would definitely have to write that down and counter, I guess. But if they, they can do it as one big package once the house is completed, the whole, the assessed value would potentially bump them up into a bigger incentive versus separate. Yes. I agree, yeah. So if they, instead of piecemealing it, which is against, but if they finish their construction up to the eligible stage, which is lockup stage, and then it's for the following tax year anyway, um, then they can have submit the application for the, which, for the whole project, which would put them into uh, the, the next funding category, which would bump them up by, um, looks like from the residential, year one, it could, depending on the city, it could be either 75% or bump them right up to 100%. So, well, so what you're saying is they would, they would qualify for the incentive program as the policy states to be applied when everything is built. Whenever that is, it doesn't matter. Is there any provisions in there as far as length? I'm not just uh, looking at the line. It's, it's when the substantial completion it's the year after that happens. Right, I understand that part. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying, do they have five years to complete? They do ask us within a reasonable timeline. Uh, I go ahead. I would think that if we were to put, considering that we waste and waste, we uh, had issues for a full year for them on their development. I don't think that it would be unreasonable to. Um, a three, a three to four year uh, length in my mind, and we can put that in. I think in our counter offer and and, and state that the incentive would apply to the finished project. Um, you have four years to complete the said project um, to take in, in advantage of that said incentive. Culture White. I agree with you completely. I think it's important for the community to understand too that that incentive plan exists for new buildings, for new businesses, and, and miscellaneous other items. And if they want to find something out about the incentive plan, then Mr. Crow will certainly share that with them. So the town is encouraging development through incentive plans. So it's there. And just talking about the incentive plan, I thought there was discussion um, previously, or quite some time ago, about reviewing that um, incentive plan and perhaps eliminating it. So I think that that should be something that should come up to a, another agenda or cow meeting at some point, because there was there was that discussion. But anyway, getting back to this, Councilor Morio, uh, looking at the program details, there is no deadline for when they, from when they buy the property to um, have their substantial completion. That can be in five years, but they just have to have to apply for that the year after their substantial completion. So. Good point. Go ahead. Right, so should we state uh, at that time, that time starts when they finish their garage? So if it takes them well, two years to get the garage started, they've already used two years of this timeline up, we should state that they get four years from when the garage is finished to get the house done? Well, I, I don't even think they even have to put the time that in there anymore because as Council Morial just said, there is no timeline. It's when the person builds and completes they apply for the, the the incentive and then receive it the following year. Yeah. Councillor White. Uh, Councillor Councillor Wintoni and I agree on most most things absolutely because he's usually right. But the fact that the incentive plan exists and these people are applying for it tells me they know about this incentive plan. But if anything encourages people to build new entities in our community, we give them a tax break for a year. But then they built this new home, and now we get the taxes back relatively quickly. So I'm, uh, I've talked to other communities that got these incentive plan. I think it's integral to getting people to move into the town of Swan River. 
Okay. Well, we'll save that for a debate during that conversation. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so just to, I'm not sure if there is a resolution in here, and they did give a, a dollar amount um, for it. I would move. Sorry, is there a resolution? We are. Okay. If you, if you renew it there, I think I've adjusted okay. the resolution to Councilor Morio. The um, conversation. I know there's been debate at the council uh, regarding the continuance of the um, incentive package. I am not opposed to putting it as part of the offer that we can grandfather them as part of this uh, for it um, going forward so that if council chooses to terminate the incentive program for whatever reason, they would be still eligible because we put the grandfather clause in it for them since they're coming. And then I think that this resolution should probably cover that if it's accepted, so I'll read it again. Uh, resolved with, <coughs> sorry, resolved that the withdrawal of the offer given to the town of Swanover on lots 429 and 431 Valley View Drive be accepted. Furthermore, that the offer on 423 11th Avenue South be accepted with the incentive being applied when the property is fully developed. We had that moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Well, that was, oh, was when Tony moved it nice second. Oh, right. It was the, that, sorry, they were right, too. It was Con Deputy Mayor when Tony moved seconded by Councillor Morio. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Go ahead. I just want to go back to the incentive program. There was substantial, for, to, for Councillor White, substantial debate on whether that incentive program should continue to exist. And yes, I, I do believe with you that um, it's a great opportunity for for the community, but just to okay. share that information. Well, again, we, we'll have an opportunity to discuss that during our COW meeting when we have uh, in a, in a future COW meeting. Okay. <clears throat> resolve, resolve that a new outdoor sign for Veterans Community Hall be purchased uh, from in, purchased from and installed by sign here for the amount of $33,005 plus taxes. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councilor Morio, then Councilor White. Um, Ms. Hengelman, I imagine just like reading here and then with some of the other notes that the uh, lights are to be solicited or quotes for lights solicited at a later date. So I'm assuming it's not a replacing a, a lit light like there's currently it's just a, a board type light and then it'll be right light shining on it it'll look like the food processing center sign and then light shining over top of that okay. yeah council white just a query i'm, I'm assuming that uh, request for proposals for this project have gone out also yeah they're in the attachment okay thank yeah. you okay further discussion three, there was three invitations and two quoted this is the yeah. last quote yeah. Recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? You're opposed? No. Favor. Okay. Thanks. So carry. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. 8.5. Resolve that the town of Swanover continue to act as a service provider for the Swan Valley Employment and Training Project and the Work Crew Project from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Again, I think I mentioned this at one of our last meetings, but this this partnership that we have with uh, this crew is, is a huge benefit to the town of Swan River, helping with our arena space and also with all our parks. They do an outstanding job. Resolve, uh, resolve the signing officers for all accounts held by Swan Valley Employment and Training Project be two of the following. Kim Kirillak, Terry Ganita, or Patty Hinkleman. Further be resolved that Derek Poole be removed as, the, as a signing officer. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. 
result of the Town of Swan River support the recommendation from the Swan Valley Health Services Committee to use funds from the Doctor Recruitment and Retention Reserve Fund to pay for a study of the primary care expansion project. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor White? No, I think we've discussed it as a medical service committee. We discussed it at length uh, yesterday with the G5, and, and uh, to me, the whole valley is 100% in favor of it. Uh, it's a wonderful thing, and who builds it later on is another issue. But the short term, we need to find out where they're going. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 9.1. Whereas the, uh, whereas the Council for the Town of Swan River does hereby agree that the recruitment of medical professionals is vital to the future of the Swan Valley and its residents. And whereas despite provincial responsibilities for the provision of health care, there is a, a need to continue making contributions toward doctor recruitment, recruit, sorry, towards the recruitment of doctors and other medical professionals in order to provide proper health care to local residents. Therefore, be resolved that the Council of the Town of Swan River does hereby agree to the following. A per capita levy of up to $16 for the next three years, 2020, 21, and 22. A portion of the municipal levy to be used for payment of a part-time employee to de devote his or her time to recruit doctors and other medical professionals for the Swan Valley. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion. Councillor White and then Morio. Two things entered my mind. That I think if we become complacent, I think we have our 12 doctors, we don't have to recruit anymore. That would be uh, very silly. In fact, uh, we are going to lose some of our doctors. They'll move back to their family communities, whatever. So this is a continuum. The doctors that we have there are very active in recruiting on their own now, right now, which I, I really compliment them. And for us to get the anesthetists and the surgeons that we definitely need, we need the CT scan. So these monies aren't just used to recruit doctors, they can also be used to buy the equipment that the doctors who want to recruit need to work on. The only query I have in here is the portion of the municipal levy. Has that amount been decided on? That last sentence, a portion of the municipal levy to be used for payment of a part-time employee. The, that has, I can answer that question because um, I'm on the, the, the foundation, and yes, it has been. Should that be shared? Um, no. Hmm. Okay, I'll follow up later with okay. the camera. Hey, Councilor Moore. Yeah. Um, this resolution is the exact same resolution that Council passed three years ago, word for word, except extending it for three years. So, um, yeah. basically, as we talked about it last night um, at the G5 meeting, uh, it was a consensus of the council's uh, representation there that we go back to our councils and pass a similar resolution to extend it for another three years to provide some certainty of funds to that fund for recruitment and the retention of doctors either um, with training incentives or equipment or whatever so um, i support this uh, resolution moving it forward to provide certainty um, because like uh, we do have two major projects um, with for recruitment and retention of physicians and other professionals in the valley um, and this is one of the um, seemingly the few things that the four council seem to almost come unanimously agree to without butting heads um, so I think we need to move forward with this okay. uh, go ahead and interestingly right now I know the uh, our present doctors are looking at a recruitment of some other doctors and want to bring them in for the weekend and take them to the lake take them to the to the ski hill, to a hockey game, whatever. And that's going to cost some money and a uh, compliment to our local doctors for coordinating this activity. But it, it's a continuum, it'll go forever. I, uh, I, uh, I had uh, an opportunity to speak with Dr. Burnside, who's the chief of staff for our doctors, and, and he mentioned that um, for a while, you know, they had enough doctors, but right now we've lost a few doctors, so we're now short some doctors. So they have now kicked into uh, trying to recruit doctors uh, again so it just goes to show that the, the fund has uh, been valuable for us in, in the past few uh, years to recruit some new doctors uh, but we need to keep on moving forward with that all right further discussion all in favor it's carried
10.1. Resolve the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number 25614 to 25683 for a total of 94,162 and 68 cents. Payroll account checks number 4606 to 4611 for a total of $106,212.39. Payroll account check number 4612 to 4617 for a total of $104,878.45. Moved by <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wantoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, check number 25673 to Spruce Country Computer for server uh, software upgrades. Is that for in the, the building here? Yeah, that's what didn't get done in 19. Okay, so Carried that's just a carry over. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the town of Swan River has made arrangements to borrow from Swan Valley Credit Union. Limited as provided by bylaw number 15, 2019. And whereas the credit union requires the town to set up either a checkings or savings account and each signing authority to open a shared account in order to facilitate such borrowing. Therefore, be it resolved that the chief financial officer be authorized to open a savings account at the Swan Valley Credit Union with the signing authorities being either Mayor Lance Jacobson or Deputy Mayor Johnny Wintoni and either Chief <coughs> Administrative Officer Charles Kroll or Chief Financial Officer Terence Ganita and be further resolved that each signing authority be authorized to open a shared account if he does not already have one at the Swan Valley Credit Union. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eleven point one. Resolved that <clears throat> resolved that proposed borrowing interest rates from Swan Valley Credit Union Limited on RBC Royal Bank and the province of Manitoba be received as information. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Dep or Councillor Morio. You have that there in front of you. Any discussion? Anything from you, Mr. Crow, on that? Uh, no, I discussed it with uh, with Terry. Um, we uh, do borrowing from different places, and we were just discussing uh, the differences in the rates and things like that. So uh, everything is in order. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Carry. Eleven point two. Resolve that the town of Swan River bylaw one two thousand and twenty, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw number eight two thousand and nineteen, <coughs> which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the construction of a new well control building, including programming, monitoring, isolation capabilities, connections to existing walls, connection to existing raw. Water supply and auxiliary works be read a first time. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? I feel like we've done this before. Yeah, uh, we, we take the original uh, bylaw and then they have to be amended when, when we get the final number in oh, on what we actually sense. have to borrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved the town of Swan River by law 2, 2020, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw 9, 2019, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the construction of the Swan River Centennial Arena fusion welded floor, including installing temporary mechanical piping, sand floor, with new header system, removal of old header system, raising boards, leveling existing floor in insulation installing insulation and vapor barrier and other required works therefore be a read a first time. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Wow. <clears throat> 
You need more water? No, nope, I'm good. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. All in favor? Carried. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you.